right, here we are, fashionably late. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, my name's Gina. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a potter in Los Angeles and I'm a teacher at Still Life Ceramics. Uh, and this is the first of what will hopefully be many uh, instructional videos for you guys to see. A lot of you are working at home and we wanna help you out um, and make some cool stuff and still be part of the community even though we're stuck at home. Uh, what we're doing today is um, pinch pot bases like this. So I'll show you how to make pinch pots and then we'll turn these into cute little vessels. Uh, here's another example, slight variation on the technique. Uh, you can also use these to make little boxes. Um, this requires a few extra steps. So maybe if you guys are interested in seeing a full tutorial on this, leave a comment below. Uh, for those of you that are joining us live, there is a chat feature. Uh, you can chat with us live on the right. Um, and if you have any questions, Mel from the studio will be there to answer those. If you're on a phone or other mobile device, uh, just leave us a comment below and we'll answer your questions. I'm gonna do this sort of as a demo style. Um, you guys are welcome to join me and follow along, but I'm gonna be working fairly quickly just to keep this video you know, under five hours long. Um, so let's get started. I'm gonna flip this down so you can see my hands in my work area. So here's what I have. First, we want to start with two pieces of clay. I've already rolled this one into a ball, but you want two equal sized pieces of clay. Maybe start with like between six and 12 ounces or so. Um, probably don't have like a little scale at home, so just eyeball it. And, um, uh oh, I'm getting texts. Mel, don't text me if you can see this. Okay, because um, I can hear you. All right, so yeah, two pieces of clay about the same size. So this is like about the size of like a peach or something like that, if you want to eyeball it. Um, and a little bit of extra clay. You won't need this much extra, but have that on hand. And as far as tools go, you really don't need a whole lot. A needle tool is good, or a bamboo skewer will do the job. Something for smoothing. I really like these metal ribs. Um, you might have a wooden one in your kit or a rubber one, those are great. Or even a credit card, you can use that for smoothing. And then I have like a few kind of random tools. I don't always use these. I have a couple trimming tools. I have one of these like rubber tipped sculpting tools. Um, that's handy, a little paintbrush. I do have a little cup of water and a small sponge, um, but we actually don't use very much water in hand building and I might not reach for this at all during my session, but it's good to have that ready if you need it. Um, another thing that's optional, but not essential is some sort of a wooden spoon that we can use as a paddle, uh, but we don't need it, we can just use our hands. Okay, so let's get started. So first you wanna take your two pieces of clay and shape them into balls. And I do this by just tapping with the palm of my hand. And if yours starts to get like weird up here, um, you can just smooth that stuff over with your finger and then keep going. And any little weird surface irregularities, yeah, just smooth those out. This doesn't have to be the most amazing sphere that ever existed, but just as long as it's like kind of circular as much as you can get it. So again, we want these to be about the same size because what we're gonna do is make two pinch pots and put them together. So we want them to match. So here's how you make a pinch pot. Take your ball of clay, you put your thumb right down in the middle and you wanna go down, not all the way, but maybe like two thirds to three quarters of the way down. And then you just start pinching it just a little bit and rotating the ball. And then I'll move my hand up a little bit to work on the thickness that's higher up. Just little pinches, you're not gonna get it all in one pass, just a little bit at a time. Okay. 
Now, if you're just making a pinch pot as, you know, its own thing, you can make this really thin if you want to. But since we're going to put these two together, um, I want a little bit of surface area to work with along the rim. So don't pinch, don't pinch it like super thin. Leave it maybe like an eighth of an inch or so. So look at the rim here. You can see like there's little teeny tiny cracks. Um, those are fine. Those always happen. Uh, we'll deal with those later. But anything bigger like this that you notice starting to form, um, just smooth that away with your finger because those only get worse the more you pinch. So here's this one. I'm happy with it. I'm going to set it aside and make my second one. I'm trying to peek at what you guys are saying in the chat. Are you guys having fun? So as you make your second one, just keep an eye on the circumference of that rim because um, we want these to match up. I can see, oh, they're actually pretty much the same already, but I'm just going to pinch this a little bit more. Another thing to remember when you make really anything in pottery, you want the walls to be even thickness. So if you feel like the base is like still really thick, you know, pinch that a little bit. If you feel like you have a thin spot somewhere, kind of skip over that as you go along. We want to try to make these more or less even thickness all the way around. So I've got my second one and I'm just going to check them. And if they don't match perfectly, that's fine. As long as, you know, they're kind of like 90% of the way there. And this looks pretty good. If you kind of notice like, oh, my second one got a little too big, you can go back to your first one and just gently pinch the rim a little bit and that'll flare it out. Hi, Michelle. All right, so I see that mine are ready to go. So before I put them together, just real quick, Sometimes I like to take whatever kind of smoothing tool or rib I have and just once go along the rim just to flatten it and smooth it out a little bit. And then I am just going to line them up and put them together. And I'm going to look at it all the way around and just make little adjustments if I need to. looks pretty good. So now I just want to make sure I don't have any little gaps. I want the clay to be touching all the way around. So I just kind of hold it like this and I put a little pressure and rotate it just to make sure everything's touching all the way around. And now I'm going to start smoothing these halves together and I'm not going to try at this stage to like completely blend it and make it totally smooth. I'm just going to take a finger and just kind of do it a little bit. If you have, you know, kind of overhang of clay up here, you can blend it this way. If you have overhang of clay below, you can blend it upward. It doesn't really matter. We just want to sort of start to fuse these together. And again, I'm just doing like a quick one, you know, first pass. So sometimes, like if I make this a little thicker, I have enough clay to just blend it and it's fine. But usually what I do is now I add a little piece of clay along this middle part to reinforce it. So here's how we do that. Now I'm going to grab some of my extra clay and I'll just pinch off a little piece like this. And then I roll it into a coil, like a small coil. You can either do this on your hands or on the table. It doesn't need to be crazy thick. It's a kind of fat worm. And then I take this and I just squish it a little bit to flatten it. Then I lay it across that middle part. I'll sometimes I'll like kind of start at one end and just put pressure and move along there. And that didn't go all the way around, so I need to make another one. So 
So I've got my coil, I squish it. Okay, and then I'm gonna start to blend this in. So I sort of take, you know, half of that coil and with my thumb blend it upward. And the bottom part, you can blend it downward. And if you have some extra in the middle, can you see like, I'm trying to have my hair be the background so you can see, see how like there's extra clay. Don't worry, you can blend it all in, but sometimes I'll sort of leave that bump and I'm gonna scrape it away in a second. And I'm also not thinking at this point like about it looking pretty. We're gonna fix all of the bumps and stuff a little later. So right now I'm not really concerned about the shape or the lumpiness or any of that. I just wanna get the form made. So here's what I have now. And I'm gonna, yeah, take this uh, ridge and remove it. So I like my rib. This credit card actually works really, really well. So let's try this. I just scrape it scrape that little extra clay away, just like that. All this extra clay, reuse it. I recommend you guys as you work, um, maybe have a little plastic container, a plastic bag that you can um, protect your scraps with. That way they won't dry out. They're a lot easier to reclaim and reuse if you keep them moist. So I'm gonna sort of put that back with my clay, cover that in plastic. Okay, so here's what I've got. Now we can start to smooth. And I'm just, I'm almost holding this parallel to the surface of the clay and gliding it like that. And you can do this as much or as little as you want to. Um, if you want your piece to have that character of, you know, still having some of your finger marks in it, you, you don't really have to do this at all. Um, if you want it to be nice and smooth, then, um, then you can sit here for a while and do it. And it looks like we have a question, so I'm just gonna read it. Do you have to put this piece in the middle if you were able? No, so, you're, so the question was um, that piece I put here to reinforce, that's not an essential step. Some, if you have enough clay to smooth it um, without adding that extra piece to reinforce, you don't have to do that. Um, it's not about, if your rim was like really thick, you're probably good to go. If you had a thin rim, it's not a bad idea to add that little extra piece. I'm just gonna keep smoothing. One thing I like to do is to keep track. So here were my two pinch pots. I like to keep track of where the tops or the bottoms were. So this is when I'll reach for my needle tool and I'm just gonna just lightly put a little X at each point. Here's why I do this. Most of the time when I make pinch pots, even when I think I've made them really evenly, um, I have more clay at the bottoms. And in order, if I'm gonna turn this into a vase, I want, it to, I want the weight to be evenly distributed. So if I orient it this way, if I keep track of where those thick spots were, then I can orient it the right way to have the weight sort of evenly distributed instead of like, if I lose track of where that extra weight is and then I turn it into a vase that's like this, it's gonna be sort of weird and off balance. Um, and again, you know, sometimes I forget to do this. It's not the end of the world, but it's a good habit to get into, I found. So I'll just smooth this more. Sometimes when you smooth with the rib, you get like these little situations. Um, you can kind of ignore those and then later rub them out with your finger.
there are going to be plenty of opportunities for us to do fine tuning, but I do like to kind of get these smooth ish at this point. So I'm about happy with this. Sometimes you'll get like these little, I don't know how well you can see this, like a little dimple. I'll put a fake one in. How about that? Sometimes as you smooth, you might end up with just like a little part that, um, like a little divot. You can take like that wet clay that kind of comes off on your rib and just spackle it and fill it in. Or if you don't have any clay on your rib, just a little extra from your scrap clay. Okay, so here's the basis of our piece. So this is sort of like Mr. Potato Head at this point. You can do, you know, you can add a neck to it. You can add a foot to it, handles. Um, I even, here's like a sculpture that I'm working on that, you know, I used one of these pinch pot forms uh, to make the base of. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do with just this basic shape. If you are going to do some sort of sculptural thing that um, doesn't have a natural opening in it, like a face would, always remember to, you need to poke a hole somewhere in the piece. Um, you can do it on the bottom if you don't want the hole to be visible. And here's why. Clay uh, will shrink as it dries and it shrinks even more in the kiln. So if I took this that doesn't have any holes in it and I put it into the kiln and had it fired, uh, the clay would shrink and the air inside doesn't shrink. So this at some point would explode inside the kiln. It obviously would break and then all those shards would, would destroy a lot of other people's pieces. So you really don't want to ever fire anything that is a closed form like this that's full of air. So don't forget to poke a hole if you're going to make a sculpture out of this. But if you're going to make a vase, um, when we put a top on, we're going to cut a hole. So you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so next thing is maybe like, you know, this is kind of a fun shape, but maybe I want to change the shape a little bit. Um, so if you don't have, this is where the wooden spoon comes in. Maybe I want to flatten this top. You can also just tap with your finger or with your hands. So you don't need that spoon. The spoon is kind of fun though. So you can do that, flatten the top a little bit. You can also use your table. You know, maybe I want to flatten that, push the sides a bit. Already I have a slightly different form. If you really, so since this is full of air, you know, it's going to resist a lot of change. So if you really want to alter the shape, then maybe you can poke a hole in it and like really, you know, because now that some of that air can escape. And then if you decide, you know what, I'm not ready to have a hole there, uh, guess what? You can just close it back up. So I kind of like to absentmindedly play with this for a little while. So again, you can do this a whole lot. You can do it a little bit. You don't have to do it at all if you like the shape that you started out with. So let's say this is what I want my vase to look like more or less. Now maybe we want to add a top to it. So like, here's the simplest way to do a little top like I did on this one. Take your needle tool and you're just gonna cut out a little circle. Make it a little bit smaller than you want the final opening to be, just as long as it's big enough for your finger to get inside. So yeah, this again can be used. So I'm gonna put that with my scrap clay, try to keep it wet. Index finger in there. <laughs> And you start pinching it. So I've got like my inside finger kind of around the clay and then my thumb and I'm just going to sort of pinch and turn it upward and rotate the piece as I go. So already it's looking really cute. When you go around the first time, you end up with this really um, kind of organic looking opening, which is perfectly lovely, but maybe you want to clean it up a little bit. Um, this clay is really nice and wet, so sometimes all you need to do 
to get started is to just take your finger, but you can also take your rib. And here's a little tip. Um, I have my cleanup sponge here on the table. It's a little bit damp. You'll, uh, when you use the rib for smoothing, you'll end up with like little bits of dried clay on the edge right there. So if you have a damp sponge on the table, you can just quickly wipe those off. Because if you take this with the crusty clay on it and then start to smooth, those bits of dried clay will make scratches in your piece. But yeah, you can use the rib to get that smooth. That made the rim a little ragged, so I'll kind of smooth out those sharp edges with my finger. Right now, the neck has this nice curve to it, but maybe I wanna make that more geometric and more angular. Um, you can use like the corner kind of part of your finger right here to get that started. So you can see that's a lot more angular and you can, again, like all this stuff, you can sit here for as long as you want to and futz with it and get it exactly right. It's nice to have a variety of ribs um, because they'll all like this credit card even has like these corners, which actually might make a really good profile. So if you want to take like a rib or whatever you have lying around and sort of run that across there, can have that help you achieve the look that you want. And you know it dug in a little bit, so you just take, sometimes your fingers are the best tools. So I'm just taking my thumb and smoothing that out a little. So there's a little bit more cleanup that I would probably want to do on this. You try to fix one thing and like something else gets squished. So oftentimes I will set these aside and let them get leather hard or at least a little bit more firm before I continue. Um, but let's talk about like other stuff that you can do. Here's another one that I made a little earlier. Here's another way to make a little bit longer of a top. Um, so I'll take a piece of clay and I will make kind of like a little tube. So first you start, oh, this is probably more than I wanted. You can make this all different sizes, but, oh, I forgot I'm wearing long sleeves and I usually use my forearm to roll. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want to roll out a coil, a lot of people do that with their palms. And for some reason, like I can't make a nice coil that way. I use my, my forearm and I find I can make a really nice coil that way. So what I just do, just put a little bit of pressure. And if you roll with your forearm, now I've got a nice little coil. Uh, it's a good idea before you do something like this to check the table for dried bits of clay because you'll pick them up, but looks like I only had one little one. Not really a big deal if it happens. Um, so I've got this. Now I'm just going to tap it to sort of level out the ends. Now you want something kind of long and skinny, like a paint, like the end of a paintbrush. You're just going to skewer this like a, you know, like you're roasting a marshmallow, but have it go all the way through. So just do it carefully so that your stick stays more or less in the center. So here's what I have. Pull it through so that you have something to grab onto on both ends. 
And now I'm going to roll it on the table. I'm going to start away from me and put a little bit of pressure and roll it toward myself. You can do this a couple of times. I was putting hardly any pressure on the top or on my right end and nothing happened up there. So after you do this a couple of times, now I have a little tube. So you can make this be like the neck of your base, which is super adorable. So let's talk about how to attach this. So up until now, I've been working with, you know, kind of big pieces of wet clay and I have been um, really blending them together. So we haven't needed to use um, slip, which some of you uh, know what that is if you've been making pottery. Um, slip is just really watery clay that's sort of a brushable consistency. And we use it as kind of a glue. It sort of acts like clay glue. Um, so when you're attaching like a small detail or like something that you want to be really strongly bonded, like the handle of a mug, or if you're, the clay that you're working with is not in the super wet state, um, it's a good idea to score both of the parts that you're going to attach and then add slip, which acts like glue. I don't have any slip because I kind of have this little home studio and I didn't have this have slip made. And I imagine a lot of you don't have slip made. So there's a little trick that can get you um, some, some slip in a pinch. So here's what we're gonna do first. Decide where on your mug, or <laughs> I'm not making a mug, I'm making a vase. All right, where on your vase you want the top to go and kind of place it and you know, make sure it looks right from all sides. Then you take your needle tool and you just mark off where you want it to go symmetrical and this now I know like this is the way to line them up so just, just remove that for a second since the inside since this neck is so long and skinny I can't really get on the inside and mark you know this little inner dimension to me so I'm gonna cut a hole in here so that you know when you try to put flowers in this space they can actually go all the way in And take that out. This part right here is really thick. Um, sometimes I like to just cut a little bit of that excess clay away. So normally, yeah, if you were going to attach these in an ideal situation, you would score and you can either score with a needle tool like this. You basically make a little cross hatch pattern. So you just make lines going one way and then back the other way. So you would score like that. You wanna score both of the pieces that are attaching. So I wanna score also this guy. Um, so a needle tool can score just fine, but I really like these series metal ribs. If you ever want to get one of these for your kit, they're pretty handy. This makes it go a little faster. Um, so here's the part where we would put slip on. If you take a paintbrush, you just paint a little coat of slip on both surfaces and then you squish them together. But like I said, I don't have any slip and you guys probably don't have any slip. So here's what you can do in a pinch. Grab a little bit of water. You don't want to get this super wet. So sometimes I'll just take my finger and dip it in get that wet, and then score it some more. And then a little bit more water and score again. And then it's kind of making its own slip. See how it's getting a little gooey? And this is gonna be fine. I might be a little bit more careful and actually make some slip if this was like a really big sculpture that I cared a lot about. Um, or something like that. But this is small. This clay is, both of these pieces of clay are pretty wet, which means they're going to want to accept each other um, more than like two drier pieces of clay would. So this is just fine for what we're doing right here. So I've got this and I'll do the same thing. A little bit of water. Score it some more. Maybe a little more water now. Uh, 
okay, now I'm ready to attach these. So I'm finding here's my little orientation mark and that goes, that lines up right there. So you kind of place it down and then you like give it a little bit of downward pressure and kind of wiggle it as you go and you'll feel it lock into place. Cool. And then maybe you got a little bit of that goo that came out the sides. Um, this is where I like, if you have like a dry paintbrush, you can just wipe that away. So that looks pretty cute, but I'm looking like, this is just an aesthetic thing. You can decide to be done but I'm looking at like the transition between the body and the neck and it's a little abrupt and I have like a little divot here. I wanna sort of make that a little prettier. So here's something you can do. Grab a nice fresh piece of clay, nice and wet. I'm gonna roll a little skinny coil. And this is sort of where you wanna start thinking about your design. If, if I want to kind of preserve this angle, but just make it a little nicer, you wanna do a really skinny coil and we're gonna blend it in. If you want more of like an easy transition, you're gonna put a thicker coil. So let's do this and see what it looks like. And you just lay it across there and maybe just start, put a little bit of pressure. And then if you have like extra clay, you can just pinch it off. And then because this is a little thicker, I might be able to blend this with my finger. So you kind of like when we had the two halves and we reinforced it with the clay, you sort of blend half of it upward and half of it downward. This is where I like these rubber tipped um, sculpting tools, especially this one that's sort of round and comes to a point. Because if especially if you have like a little teeny tiny coil and you can't get your fat fingers in there to smooth, it really helps with that. But if you don't have one of these, this is where the bamboo skewer really helps. Um, and you can even use your needle tool. So don't worry if like you don't have, you know, 5,000 tools at home. I was actually getting good... Uh, action from my finger. So I might just keep doing this just to start. You know, one thing the bamboo skewer is going to be helpful for is I might want to go on the inside and just make sure, you know, there's only so much cleanup you can do in a, you know, long skinny tube like this, but just kind of Clean out like any burrs of clay that might block, you know, your flower stem from going all the way down. Okay, back to this. You know what the nice thing about hand building is too versus wheel is that let's say I do this and now I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I actually don't like this. I want to do something else. You can just cut this off and then do something else. You can't do that on the wheel. So we'll just take a minute and smooth, smooth that out. Yeah, that looks better. That, oh, it's kind of, it's better, but not perfect. And then you can like, you know, if there's like a bump here, you can kind of push it in. This is another situation where I might, you know, there's still like, this is looking pretty good, but there's still some refining I want to do. Um, but I might wait until this is leather hard. You know, like my top here, this little raggedy business, I want to cut off, but this is like thin and delicate and still very wet. Um, so I'm going to want to go in with my needle tool and just cut that away. But I think I'll leave that until it's a little hard because I don't want to, you know, with the pressure that I need to put with the needle tool, like bend this. So I'm just going to leave that for a little later. Other details. Maybe I want to put cute little handles on this. 
you know, this is where you can really get creative. So I just rolled out a coil and I'm kind of flattening it. You can make like a much neater one. Sometimes I'll do like a little, almost like you're sketching. I'll just squish out a little piece of clay just to see what it looks like. Flatten that end. What do you think? That's kind of cute. I'm gonna think about it. You don't, you can attach this one. This is a little drier, so you don't have to do this now, but also just to get you thinking about other stuff you can do. Maybe you wanna put a foot on it. So it's, you know, not just a flat bottom, but is something more like this. It has a little, little foot situation down there. So you can just roll out a coil. Don't knock anything over while you're rolling your coil. Sometimes when you get a coil started, this happens. Just do that. And just very light pressure. I find like sometimes these get like rectangular and it's usually because you're putting too much pressure. So just like the lightest little bit of pressure and it'll be round. So order of operations, it might have been smart for me to put the foot on first because if I'm gonna be working on it upside down, now I've got this little delicate neck to contend with, but you know what, I'm gonna deal with it because you know, it'll be fine. So here's what a foot would look like. So here's my coil, just make sure, sometimes the ends like do that. I'll just cut off that part. Then you bend it into a circle. Keep an eye on this part here because when you bend it, it stretches the clay. Sometimes it starts to crack. And at this stage where it's really wet, you can just take your finger and smooth it. If you need like the tiniest little bit of water, you can like dip the tip of your finger in water and just put a little bit on. But with um, hand building as opposed to throwing, we actually, we want friction when I move my hands on the clay, I don't want it to be so slippery that like if I'm trying to smooth something out, I can't put any pressure that my hand just glides across the surface. Um, I also don't want the clay to get really soft. You know, I want it to hold its shape. So that's why we don't like to add too much water when we hand build. So anyway, back to this. So just make these ends meet. Make sure you don't trap any air. I have like this weird texture on the end. So just bring these together and smooth it. And on the inside, if you can get in there. So since this is really wet and this is really wet and the way I'm gonna put this on is by doing a lot of blending, I'm, I think I can get away with not slipping and scoring. So you just put that right on the base, give it a little pressure, maybe give it a little tap tap. And now I'm going to Blend that upward. All the way around. And then if you want to kind of take your finger this way and smooth out some of those finger marks you can do that. And then if you can do it on the inside, this one's really narrow. Um, sometimes if you have like just something lying around, like I have this broken tool, there used to be a knife at this end also, but now this is sort of like a rounded end. Maybe if you can get that in there 
and blend that clay down. Just the more you blend it and smooth the, the two sections together, the stronger it'll be and the less likely to crack. And if you can't get in there, it's not the end of the world. It'll be fine. And then maybe I'll try to get my finger in there and make it a little nicer. And then I've still got that seam that I didn't really do a very good job when I attached the ends of the coil together. All right, how do we look? Oh, it's cute. Oh, I like it. Um, actually, that might look with a foot. I kind of like it with handles now. So yeah, you can play around here. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> this is something I like to do. Um, make a little top. So just a little piece of clay. If you want it to be like perfectly round, you could like you really carefully roll out a coil and then if you have a little cookie cutter or something you know that you can use as a template but since this is hand built and a little wonky already i'm not going to make this like perfect so you kind of start with a little sphere and just i'm sort of pinching it and rotating it so it turns into a flat little disc and this is kind of what I was talking about before as you're pinching something if you notice these larger little cracks or or holes developing, smooth those out right away because they get bigger. If you ignore them, they just get bigger the more you pinch. So yeah, what does he look like with a little hat on? That's kind of fun, but I think I don't want to do that for this one. So um, anywho, I think that's about, that's about it for pinch pot bases. Um, a couple little finishing notes. Um, I will, well, here's the thing I, I mentioned a couple times about, you know, letting this get a little firmer and doing some more cleanup on it. Um, maybe we could do another video and I could show you exactly what my process is there. The nice thing about having, um, this here in my home studio is I can really keep an eye on it. So I could just leave this out uncovered um, and just check on it every, you know, hour or so and see where the dryness level is. And then once it's ready, um, dryness wise, I could either go ahead and work on it. Or if I'm like in the middle of something else, I can then cover it up in plastic. So it, it stays at that moisture level. Um, when you're working out of a studio, uh, you might want to cover it up completely and leave it for a few days. Um, and then check on it next time you're back in the studio. Dryness time, unfortunately, is, is hard to, to pin down. You know, people always ask like, oh, well, when will this be ready to do the next step? And it's kind of impossible to say because it depends on, you know, how thick your piece was. It'll retain more moisture if it's thicker. If you're in a humid climate, it will retain more moisture. Or if just, you know, wherever you are, like if you've had rain, there will be more moisture in the air. So your piece will dry out more slowly. If like, you know, the AC vent is like happening to to blow like right where it's sitting it'll dry out faster so it's hard it's hard to say um if i were to take this and like wrap it up completely it'll lose a little bit of moisture and maybe like after a week or a week and a half it'll be a little firmer but since i'm able to check on it here at home i'm just gonna leave this out for a couple hours and it might be ready at that point um you can put stuff outside in the sun if you want something that like dry really fast but you have to check on it often because I've seen pieces go from like still too wet to almost too dry in a matter of like 20 minutes. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a great way to get things to dry fast, but be careful if you do that. So I'll just set this aside for a little bit and uh, hope my cat doesn't knock it off of the table and then uh, I'll finish it up. Okay. Well, here's my face again. Thanks guys so much for joining me. Um, let us know in the comments what other videos you want to see. There will be more coming in from us um, over the next few days. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe. I don't know. What do you two people say? Uh, okay. <laughs> over and out. Bye.